Today I am demoing our PBRS software, which is a report automation tool for Power BI reports and Microsoft SQL Server reporting services. What you are currently looking at is the home screen of the PBRS software. I have already pre-created schedules listed here. Within these schedules, you'll notice on the left-hand side, we do have folder structures. These, you can add and rename these schedules. Many customers may prefer to have the uh, different departments listed as the folders to keep the reports separated and to be able to easily find them. Down at the bottom, you'll see what we would call uh, predefined smart folders. And these folders, you can easily grab a whole list of schedules based on all of your currently added schedules. So if I click on my disabled schedules, what you will notice here is all of the schedules that have been disabled are easily viewable. I can change the view to see any specific information that I may be looking for. It will take just a moment, but it will order out these reports and list the last runtime frequency destination as you can currently see here. So I am going to go back to the uh, main folder structure here, and I would like to start out looking at the options. So when setting up PBRS, you're going to have a lot of configurations um, that you will have the ability to uh, set up. These are all stored in a configuration file. So under general, you'll notice a customer number. If you have activated the software and are a current customer, that information um, will be populated here when the software is activated. You do have an option to refresh the desktop. Uh, what that will do is refresh the last result runtime uh, if you are viewing the detailed view. The only convert remote paths to UNC gives you the ability for any shared locations, whether you're using a disk destination or shared network location. It will automatically convert that to a full UNC path versus using a mapped network drive, which we do recommend using. The process watcher for manual execution simply allows you to monitor the status of any schedules that you have decided to manually execute. That is easily done by right clicking on a schedule and you will have a list of options which might have gotten minimized so let me close there. So right clicking and manually executing will give you that option. Using relative time, that is simply based on the machine time. Error handling is very important, especially for the users who are entering in the, uh, want to monitor the reports and any schedules that may fail. So you would definitely want to put in a support group or uh, IT or data analyst reporting email address here. And this will, again, send any emails um, with any errors or uh, reports that have failed within the system. You do have the ability to use text messaging as well as an, uh, another form of communication. Under the miscellaneous, uh, we have a few additional um, options here, uh, syncing user defaults across all clients. So if you have multiple installations of the software and you want all the user defaults to sync across the same, you can um, enable this option. By default, after installation, automatically checking for updates and loading Microsoft SSRS uh, parameters automatically are enabled. You do have additional report options as well, um, the number of maximum Power BI report pages to render at the same time. You'll notice this is configurable as well. Um, and you do have the ability to show hidden report parameters. This again is for Microsoft SSRS here. And then the enable system verbose logging. By default, this is checked. I do leave, uh, recommend leaving it checked as that does provide and create additional uh, log files that uh, may be needed in the future if you have any questions or issues and need to contact support.
use report execution endpoint uh, for report execution. This again is for Microsoft SSRS. It is the report service URL. I'm just changing the endpoint for that. Moving on to messaging, this is the mail setup. We do recommend using SMTP, and what we do is connect to your mail server using an account. Uh, you'll notice here that I, I do have my account added in using uh, the default Microsoft Office 365 details. Under the advanced option, we do have the additional security options for SMTP. Uh, if you're uh, using TLS or an SSL connection, you have the ability to enable those there. By default, we have the automatically embed related images into HTML emails. So if you're using an email destination, uh, this would apply to that to automatically embed those related images. We do have the different encoding characters. Uh, I would definitely leave this at the default um, options and play with from, from there. You do have the default email font as well. Moving on, we do have the scheduler. This is what runs your schedules automatically. I do currently have mine turned off for demo purposes, uh, but enabling or checking the use background scheduling, this option will run in the background under the user account who is logged into the machine where PBRS is installed. Uh, we do nowadays recommend using the NT service account. So this would be a domain account that you would um, enter in here and what this will allow you to do is if for any reason the machine reboots in the middle of the night there's a power outage or something happens as soon as that machine is turned back on the scheduler will automatically pick up and continue on as normal and that is not the case with the background scheduling with the background scheduling someone would need to be logged into the machine in order for the schedules to pick up we do have the option to use a backup scheduler server. So if you do have multiple installations and you are using it in a client server environment, you do have an option um, if you have a backup scheduler to, to enable this option. With the scheduler, we do have polling intervals. So by default, all schedule types, including event-based, are set to a 30-second polling interval. So every 30 seconds, the scheduler will check to see for any schedules or reports that need to run. This pre-check database conditions using up to, so if this is enabled, this is specific to event-based, what this will do is pre-check your condition that you have set, and I'll show you an example of, of what the pre-check the database condition is. Um, but it will pre-check that um, using so many connections prior to the schedule kicking off. The multi-threading capability allows you to run multiple schedules or reports at the same time. Currently, you can set this to a max of eight uh, threads, so you could have up to eight Power BI reports or SSRS reports running simultaneously. Now, keeping in mind with this means there will be more resources used, so you may need to have more um, space or CPU uh, memory in order to handle this type of load. Under miscellaneous, these are uh, just some additional older options. Do not check and restart the scheduler. Um, this is typically used for background scheduling. If you're if you are on background and you've got multiple people logging into the machine at the same time, uh, you definitely do not want the scheduler to start another uh, thread because uh, that, that will duplicate um, or more um, the reports. On editor startup, delay restarting the scheduler. Uh, again, not really needed uh, any longer, but this does apply to the background scheduling. When it does start up, it will actually hold off starting the scheduler for so many uh, minutes that you specify. Um, using blackout times for the scheduler, if there are certain times of the day that you definitely do not want schedules to be running, uh, a great example would be uh, when you are doing a, a backup of the databases, you may want to ensure that schedules are not running during that time, number one, because they will fail, because the database would be uh, unavailable. 
but also just to prevent any email error alerts going out unnecessarily. Um, so typically maybe 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. if you've got a backup going on up at that time you can set a, a blackout time for that for the scheduler. Moving on to housekeeping, um, going to the folder housekeeping side, if you have any files or folders that you would like to monitor and purge at any time, I can simply select whatever path that I would like to have. Um, so I've got a demo reports folder here, and I want anything older than, you can select so many days, weeks, minutes, um, anything older than eight weeks to go ahead and remove and I can go ahead and purge and do that now. So it's just, again, a simple folder housekeeping, keeping things cleaned up. Any temporary folders that you may have things going to can be cleared out or um, set up here to automatically clear out through the scheduler. You will notice here you do have an additional option of when it was created or when it was last modified as far as what date it needs to look at. User defaults. So we do have some email setup um, defaults. If you're using email a lot and you've got the same subject and email message, you can go ahead and set up a default here and that will automatically populate when you are using an email destination. Very similar to the database defaults, if there is a username and password that is typically used for uh, your database, you can go ahead and enter that in here. Under miscellaneous, um, you've got your default report location. So this, in this case, it would apply to um, Power BI report server or Microsoft SSRS. Any of your report service URLs, you can add in multiple and save them here, but you can set one default location. Under default destinations, very similar to the user defaults, um, I, as you've noticed here, have set up a default destination for pretty much every schedule, uh, destination type. This, again, um, just saves the time of setting up any um, settings, username and passwords. Um, if you're using FTP, maybe you use a specific uh, network location all the time when you're using a disk destination, you can preset all of that up and then save time by importing in that destination and make any small changes that you need. Under system paths, these are the PBRS um, default folder locations that we may store some temporary data. So you've got your cache data, snapshots, um, and some additional options here. You can uh, go to these folders uh, specifically for SMTP if you want to look at the EML file for any reason. You have the ability to do so. You will see here under the temporary output folder, this is where we temporarily store the copy of the uh, output or report, uh, but it is set to delete by default after seven days. So anything older than seven days will be uh, removed. You do have an audit trail list. This is currently disabled, but I can enable this, and you would need to select a data source. So uh, in this case, it does look for a 32-bit ODBC connection where we can store all of the uh, data for any users, uh, whether they're creating a schedule, deleting a schedule, anything they're doing in the system can be tracked using this audit trail. We do have default tasks. Uh, I like to also call them uh, workflows, possibly, but these custom tasks are literally that. Um, being able to run batch files or folders, uh, you will also see you can execute um, additional schedules that you may have already created, uh, refreshing Power BI data sets, many different options in regards to files and folders. Uh, writing text files, merging PDF files, manipulating uh, PDFs, many different options for FTP, whether it's creating, deleting, modifying a directory, uploading, downloading files to the FTP site. Now, this is a custom task, but we do have an FTP as a destination. So if you are sending or wanting to send reports to an FTP site, you would do that under a destination. But we do have, for any additional needs outside of reporting as well, um, these options here. 
Many people love the database options, um, so executing SQL scripts or S, um, SQL Server uh, blobs, um, so save a blob, grab a blob from a SQL Server, um, modifying a database record or even adding in a database record. Through the demo, I will give you some examples of how we could use some of these. Default parameters, this is specific to Microsoft SSRS. You can um, set some default parameters here to make it easily available for your users. So again, this is the options and configuration settings that would be saved under a configuration file locally. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.